Welcome to H2K Infosys. H2K Infosys is a e-verified business based in Atlanta, Georgia, United States. We provide 100% job-oriented, instructor-led, face-to-face, true live online software training programs. It also includes access to Cloud Test Lab with software tools. We provide live project for you to work on. We also provide assistance with mock interviews, resume preparation and review, and job placement assistance. H2K Infosys is trusted by so many students across the world. H2K Infosys provides world-class services in IT training with real-time project work for corporates and individuals, special IT training for MS students in the United States, software design development, QA manual and automation, performance testing and maintenance, IT staff augmentation, job placement assistance and tech support. Once you have created EJV application, open the project. You can see that EJV module is our source, just like our source. JBoss version 5.0 consists of libraries provided by the JBoss and ER libraries. Your account project client is a jar file, which will get generated automatically by Eclipse itself. Now you are going to create a bean onto your EJB project. So now we are going to start with session beans. And the first one is stateless session bean. Stateless session bean, it won't maintain any conversation state. To create a stateless session bean, you need to annotate your class with at the rate stateless. All these annotations are available in Java X dot EJB package. So that means you are supposed to import the package Java X dot EJB dot star, then only you can access all these annotations. Once you have declared the annotation for your class, the class will become, the normal class will become an EJB, Enterprise Java Bean component. It's not required for you to extend or implement any kind of specification classes or interfaces. All that you need to do is you just need to specify with annotation at the rate stateless to your class file and the class is called as Pojo. Plain old Java object. See in terms of EJBs your action form is called as POJOs, nothing but your plain old Java objects. With EJB 3.0 version, all your components are POJOs, plain old Java objects, nothing but you can write any kind of properties with setters and getters, and in addition, it consists of some business methods as well. Business method, nothing but just like your withdraw, deposit, or get balance, those methods. So your amount property will consist of setters and getters, and it also consists of some additional business methods. OG means plain old Java interface. Once you have declared a stateless bean or your session bean, you are going to define a contract for your bean. Contract nothing but your interface. Normally, we need to follow interface first and then 
the implementation for that but no for ejbs we'll do in a reverse way or else you can write the contract first and you can implement but with eclipse you can just specify the bean class first and once after that you can generate your interface based on your bean class you are going to provide two b sorry two interfaces this is a spec suggested approach previously with 2.1 you will have three interfaces local remote and home interface we'll see why ejb 2.1 is complicated when you are implementing local interface see normally interface means it consists of certain methods let us say it consists of five methods when you are implementing local interface means within your ejb within your ejb you are going to provide definition for all those five methods but you need only one of the method you need only one of the method from this local interface but as you are implementing an interface it is a required stuff or java spec that you are supposed to provide the definition for all the interface methods with ejb 3.0 this local and remote interfaces they are not framework dependent you are going to write a business interface nothing but og you are going to write plain old java interface and you are going to declare that as at the rate local or at the rate remote with annotations and you are not going to implement any kind of interfaces with your local or remote interfaces so within your bean you are going to implement this local or remote that means whatever the business methods that are available at local or remote you are going to provide the definition for that only the local interface is used say you are going to develop a client server application you want to test this application that means you want to test this application within the same jvm instance itself so you are supposed to get an instance of your ejb component that will be based on your local registry local jnda registry let us say you have actual client server application once after that test so the client was supposed to provide or supposed to use only remote interface the client was supposed to use remote interface to get the access to your component see we can provide direct access to our ejbs any time we are supposed to provide only the contract information to the client that's the reason we are providing interface access to the client to create an ejb right click on ejb module new here you can see that message driven bean and session bean you can see that there is no entity beans at all because with 3.0 there is no entity bean so select session bean we are going to work on session bean first session bean just like how you are giving the normal class details the package structure com dot details dot account info account stateless bean oh it was by default provided by your eclipse itself this was not from 
JBoss plugin. Account stateless mean and once after that select the state type whether you want stateless or stateful. So first of all select stateless only. Once after that you can see that create business interfaces. We need both local and remote. Currently only local got selected enable remote as well. Click on finish. So here you can see that on the left side in the account project it has created account stateless bean your stateless bean and you don't have local and remote interfaces at this level because local and remote interfaces are required for the client side and by default Eclipse places them local and remote directly onto the client project itself. You can see that local and remote are available within your client project only. See the local and remote classes, are, sorry, interfaces are available at this level also, but they are not visible. They are available directly within your account project, project client jar file. These two projects are interlinked. So when you refer from this place, it will redirect to you at this location only. Your account stateless pin here you can see that it is at the rate stateless, which is annotation. Java X dot EJB dot stateless. Go to your local bean. Your account stateless bean local. It was at the rate local. Account stateless bean remote. This is a remote bean that will be specified based on at the rate remote annotation. Normally, when you are writing the business method. You are supposed to provide the business method at local level and remote level at both the levels. That's the reason you are not going to provide any kind of methods at this level. Instead of that, go and create one more sample interface. Account stateless interface. And write all the required methods public void deposit int amount public int with a draw int amount public void int get balance. So these are three business methods that you are going to expose to the client. So once you have defined a separate interface, you can just go and extend from your local and remote level. See if you didn't write as a separate interface, you need to do as write those three methods at local level and also at the remote level. So instead of that, what I have done is I have created a separate interface. That means it will be available to my account stateless bean automatically. Because the interface extends interface. So the first concrete class was supposed to provide the definition for all the interface methods. Click on this level and add unimplemented methods. See your bean class, it was supposed to implement local and remote interfaces. Once it has deployed onto the container, it was exposed to the client based on these two interfaces only. That's the reason you are supposed to implement the local and remote interface within your EJBs. So now provide definition at this level. I'm taking one emote variable. System dot out dot println.
total balance after deposit. Amount plus equal to start with thousand bucks. Chris? Similarly, write the code for withdraw as well. Chris? Yep. Uh, sorry, this is Vijay. Uh, why do we need to implement both the uh, remote and the local? That is the spec defined one. Oh. So now we have provided a simple definition for all those business methods. Once after that, we are going to deploy our bean onto the container. So our JBoss has already started here, add and remove projects. So this is application server, so you can add ER files as well. So currently our application is account project EAR. Directly add this one and click on finish. So here you can see that it has created account project EAR dot EAR file and it will be going to deploy onto the server. Let us go and verify at the deployment location how it has created. So our deployment location is JBoss server default deploy. You can see that account project EAR dot EAR file it has created. The JAR file it has created first and after that it has created the EAR file and it has moved that to your server default deploy location. So that means currently our application was available on the server. Let me stop at this location. I'm going to start from separately because I want to run the client code from Eclipse only. So to start the server manually, you just need to execute run.bat file. Meanwhile, we'll write the client code. So the client code you are going to write in account project the client. Normally, you are going to provide the jar file what you have created as account project client dot jar file to this project, but currently you have the access to local or remote. The jar file will consist of only the class related to your local or remote interface, only those two interface details. Currently, those two Java available within the same project. So, no need to import the Java file. Sorry, no need to import the jar file. Write a client code now. We have mentioned that EJB 3.0 you can easily verify with a standalone client itself. So I'm going to write a standalone client. Account dot, dot, account dot, 
client project and account stateful client. For a client to access a remote bean or a bean which was available on the server, you need to get the JNDI name. So to get the JNDI details, you are supposed to create a context initial context object first that you are supposed to look up for the JNDI name that was available in the registry. So I'm not going to write the JNDI code again. I'll take it from the existing code itself. So once after this, you are supposed to look up the JNDI. That means you need to know the JNDI details. To get the details of your JNDI, you can verify in the logs itself. See here you can see that the JBoss as kernel, it got deployed and this is the JNDA name. This is for some other stuff, Secure Deployment Manager. So each and everything will be exposed as a service onto the from the application server. In the same way, your EJB will also expose as a JNDI. Here you can see that. Your JNDI is account project EAR slash account stateless bean slash remote. That is the first one. And one more account project EAR slash account stateless bean slash local. This is the second one. This is used for local access and this is used for remote access. Currently, I'm working from remote JVM. So I need to use the, this particular name to get access to our stateless being. See, once you have deployed your application, during the deployment process, your JBoss application server will verify is this an enterprise application or not. If this is an EJB related stuff, then it will read the EJBs that are available within your application and it will create the JNDA details just like this. You can see at this level also. Take this one. Look up for that particular remote object. So currently you are looking for account stateless being with remote. So you are going to get an instance for your remote object. So your remote object is Go back to your code. Your remote object is account stateless being remote. So that's the object which will be returned by your container. So convert that to your account stateless being remote. Once you got the remote object instance, you can easily call those methods because you have the access to the dot class file. That means you have the access to all the methods. I'm calling deposit method. Get balance I'm calling.
see now our EJB has deployed onto the server and it was available for servicing the clients. Execute this one now. Let us see if there are any issues. You can see that here total balance after deposit, which is 1250, and total balance 1250. This was executed on the server side. Verify the server code. So, first we are calling deposit method. It got increased 1000 plus 250, which is 1250. And after that, we are calling again the get back. method this time LU and on the client side you can see that the value was proper account balance is 1250 let us execute one more time available balance 1500 Let me open the document. What happened exactly? During our first run, no, client, it was not part of ER file. See, currently I'm executing from standalone. This is a separate JVM and this is a separate JVM. I'm communicating from one JVM to another JVM. See the client details, the client details, if you think in the jar perspective, it consists of account stateless being local and remote. It was supposed to be available on the server side as well. Then only it has the access to those two class files. But you are providing access to the client based on these two contracts only. That's why you are providing these two details to the client. Now come back to our application. During our first run, we have called deposit of 250. So we have deposited 250 and the current first balance is 1000. Once we have deposited 250, it was supposed to be 1250. This is fine. During my second run, I have again deposited 250. The first balance should be 1000 only. So when I have deposited 250, it should return as 1250. I have executed this Java file once and my Java program has terminated. That means I don't have the JVM available now to make a call to the server side. I have executed second time. See, during the first run and second run, I'm executing a standalone application. That means it won't maintain the memory, whatever that was available on the first run. It should return as 1250 only because the first balance should be 1000. The reason for that is because this is a stateless being and it was not supposed to maintain any kind of conversation state. But what happened? You are able to get the value as 1500. Previously, the balance was 1250 and it got increased to 1500. That means the previous conversation was available in the memory on the server side. But as per the specification, Stateless session beings, they won't maintain the conversation state, but here this is somewhat different, whatever that we have got as a result. Let me open one more image. Yeah, just a second.
session means the flow will be whenever a client asks for a reference to the being how he will ask for that he will use jnda lookup whenever a client asks for a jnda lookup the container will create an instance for that and it will return the instance back to the client that means the container will invoke the new instance method on the session bean object there is one another requirement for your session beans the requirement is your class should contain a default constructor your bean it should contain a default constructor you can see that here it has provided directly the default constructor if you are not writing this one that's also fine but if you write a parameter as constructor and if you didn't write the default constructor it will throw initiation exception so many of our students have given testimonials on how our training programs are you will find them on kudzu.com and on our website h2kinfosys.com on our website h2kinfosys.com you will also find more detailed information on who we are the courses that we offer what each course covers also if you're interested in a demo program please register on our home page on the left hand side just give us more information about yourself and we will send you a link for a demo class the demo class is absolutely free experience our commitment by just attending an orientation workshop at no cost our team of faculty and advisors are here to guide you with the right information if you still have more questions please feel free to call us call us at 770 777 this is a united states number if you're calling from the uk call us at 020 337 One seven six one five. You can also email us at training at h two k infosys dot com or h two k infosys at gmail dot com. Thank you for watching our videos. We wish you a great career in information technology.